Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Mario and welcome back. So in today's video, I would like to talk about hotkeys and UI and basically just address some of the most commonly asked questions in the comment section, uh, which is related to uh, the colors that I'm using and the hotkeys that I'm using. So uh, we're gonna talk about that here. And in case you missed it, uh, we already have introduction to my modeling tool series, which covers a lot of the similar things. So for example, interface navigation and customization as well. So in case you're interested how you can uh, change your colors, how you can change your hotkeys, you can already check it in the video. So this is already available on my website and on YouTube as well. And also included my uh, UI setup and the color combinations if you want to use them, use the images like this and do it manually. So in addition to this, um, we also have a lot of uh, in-depth videos about the tools that I'm using. So for example, last couple of videos, I was mainly focused on the workflow and I didn't so much explain what uh, tools I use and so on. So if you want to see, uh, for example, if you want to know everything about the building, uh, cut tools, sliding and so on, you can all check it here. Also, if you want to, let's say, compare the tools from um, Cinema 4D, Blender or any other tool, uh, how do they compare to Maya's, you can also use this video as well. Let's now talk about some of the changes that you can do here. So I have a couple of workspaces. Uh, this is going to be the workspace probably that you're going to see first once you open Maya. And I have here uh, one that I call Maya. This is basically the one that I use uh, to record tutorials. And then I have the one that I actually use for uh, my work. And uh, this is very, very minimal. As you can notice, I have very, very clean viewport and I don't have any other distraction on the side because I use a lot of hotkeys. And I like this viewport a lot because it simply allows me to uh, remove every single distraction that I do not need and focus only on hotkeys. And I can also show you how you can do that. So for example, you can come here to Windows UI Elements and here basically remove every single thing that you do not need. So for example, helpline, command line, Rain slider, uh, time slider. So in terms of modeling, uh, you basically do not need uh, these things. So if you do not need toolbox, you can remove it uh, here as well. Same thing as the shelf. So for example, uh, shelf I here uh, have on a hotkey just in case I need it. So for example, I have it turned off, but in case I need it for some reason, again, I can always toggle it uh, on and off with the hotkey. And yeah, so this is how you can uh, do these uh, workspaces and basically once you're done you want to save it you can come here and simply save current workspace as and give it a name so that is that is all and if you want to come back then simply reset uh, the workspace all right uh, let's now talk about uh, some of the color combinations uh, before we move on so a lot of questions were uh, about uh, the colors that I have and why is this blue? So basically you can come here to Windows, Settings, Preferences, and then Color Settings. And then under General, this is going to be your background color. My background is set to currently to 0 0.22. So this is kind of a shade of gray. And then you can use also the slider if you want to uh, find any other color. Uh, as for, let me just turn this to 2020, 20, actually 22. And then we have active and inactive colors. So basically active is going to be, if you go to components, uh, polygon faces, there is going to be the color. So anything that it's already here uh, defined, you just use this slider and then find the color you want to use. And it's simple as that. Same thing with the uh, polygon edges. So I have blue edges. So here we can change the color of the edges as well. And same thing if you go to vertices, select all the vertices. My vertices are greenish and there. So you can play with that. And like I mentioned, you can also download uh, my UI as wish. A uh, couple of other things here maybe worth mentioning since we're here, I can add uh, more edges so that I can see it a bit better. So for example, one important thing that I like to use is detach components and basically once you detach um, two objects and they still share the same edge that edge is going to simply look thicker and if you go into edge mode and select everything you will see that this edge looks thicker and this is just an indication that uh, this edge is open and it's not connected and you can uh, enable this under settings preferences preferences display and under polygons and I believe that highlight border edges needs to be on. Um, I'm not sure will this immediately be active or you need to reset or start a new scene so you need to, you need to check that out as well. 
All right, so let's now talk about uh, hotkeys and how we can set those up. So if you go to Windows Settings Preferences Hotkey Editor, uh, you're going to now have a new Windows here, and you're going to have your hotkey set. By default, you're probably going to have my default. And once you do your own hotkeys, you can save it right here. So I have just my keys. And if you're, let's say, interested in changing any of the uh, commands, so for example, I have here extrude is set to control E. And if you wish to uh, give any other commands, uh, you will see here that everything what is green is already a signed key and everything what is gray is unassigned. So even if you hover over E, and then we'll see what is assigned to that key. So for example, in my case, I have move tool, poly extrude, and so on. So once you're interested in setting a hotkey, so for example, with control combination, you will see that a lot of, uh, now not a lot, but some of the options will open up and then you can assign hotkeys to that. Once you're done, just click here and simply save. So let's go into uh, the another, I'm gonna open my workspace, so maybe it's going to be easier to explain here. So I have some other custom uh, hotkeys that I'm using quite a lot. And before we actually talk about those, um, you can actually hide these top menus as well. So if you go to shift control M, you can hide this panel toolbar. And if you go to shift M, you can hide panel menu and control M hide top menu. And basically again, control M, shift M and shift control M will bring those back. So again, um, sometimes I'm working without uh, this panel toolbar. And again, just to get the maximum space. And like I mentioned, I just like to work on a very, very clean viewport. So in that case, uh, when you don't have uh, this bar there, some of the most commonly used tools, for example, me or grid, I'd say adding a wireframe and so on, I already assigned hotkeys for that. So in case that is hidden, I have Alt-G to remove uh, the grid. Then I have Alt-5 to toggle uh, the wireframe mode. So for example, if I'm working on edges here and I would like to match the edges there, just simply with the hotkey, I can turn that back on. Uh, same thing, for example, if I'm working with the materials. So for example, I have a material here and I need a quick uh, material attributes. I don't need to right click and hum come here. Again, I have an Alt-U hotkey and I just open uh, this menu. All right here, same thing with the uh, Alt-6. With Alt-6, I can toggle between um, material and normal Lambert. So again, just in case, for example, that this is a uh, dark material and it's covering the edges. And for some reason, I just need to see it better. Again, I just toggle that with a hotkey. And this is again, the same thing that it's found right here. But in this case, I just don't need to click uh, each time and, and go there. I also have Alt uh, O for outliner. So in case uh, that I need outliner for some reason, I just call it uh, like this. And then I have uh, Alt 7 for hypershade. And again, the same thing, just in case I need it, I can call it like that. Um, in addition, what it's also maybe really cool, um, it's a cool hotkey, but it's not as much known. Uh, I can add here more uh, divisions. And uh, let's go to the form and add a bend deformer. So basically by default hotkey for that is going to be T. For me, that is for scale. Uh, but T hotkey by default uh, for me is eight, is going to toggle this little uh, handle. And basically that handle will just allow you to use bend deformers without going into attribute editor. So again, a very useful hotkey that allows very, very cool uh, and fast workflow. All right, some other things here to mention. Uh, I don't have pre-selection highlight active most of the time. Uh, and basically, if you go shift, control, right click, select pre-selection highlight. So by default, you're probably gonna have something like this. I have it uh, turned off uh, here. Some other hotkeys that I use a lot are control four to uh, create a duplicate. So I use that a lot because I always need duplicate uh, faces for something. So for example, <laughs> If I need a small uh, piece from this uh, part, Control 4 is just going to create a duplicate from that. Uh, some other hotkeys are uh, combined. So basically, if I need to combine two objects into one, I use Control 3 for that. Uh, then I have W is going to be for uh, target weld and so on. So I'm going to leave all these uh, hotkey lists in the description right below the video so you can 
copy those if you wish. But I think that these were uh, the most used one. And I think one more maybe worth mentioning is uh, Control, actually Alt L, to make polysurface live just for retopology in case I need to cut something out. And yeah, that is all. Um, by default, also I think Control L will toggle uh, modeling toolkits. I'm not sure. I think that this is uh, default. So in case you need that, you can always toggle that. And I think Control A is going to be attribute editor. And I think that this is also by, by default. So yeah, um, I think more more or less that is all what I wanted to cover in this video, and I hope that it answers some of the questions. And in case not, feel free to answer, uh, feel free to ask some more in the comment section down below. And yeah, so thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.